was a hot summer night in the Hamptons, but people came out to the Hamptons Cannabis Expo, the first one ever. THCX, the new ETF was here, MMLG Brands, Merida Capital Partners, the legislator Diane Savino was here. People wanted to hear more about New York and the cannabis situation, and also plenty of CBD brands based out of New York were here representing. I hosted this event because it's too important a topic for us to neglect it and not address it. It makes a lot of sense right now understanding where the legislation is going, where public opinion is changing, that we need to get ahead of it and not sit back and be in denial that this isn't happening. In terms of uh, recreational legalization, do you think it's going to happen this year? Will they get the votes in this year? When no. No. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether the governor does. So New York State, you can put um, policy issues inside our state budget. It's kind of the way the governors for decades have kind of used the carrot and the stick. So I don't want to vote for this, but if I don't vote for this in the budget, then I'm voting against school aid and health care, and nobody wants to do that, right? Um, so that's one of the ways you get legislators to vote for things if they're unpopular, because they can go home to their constituents and say, well, I had no choice. This one was a little bit more complicated, so people just pushed it out. <laughs> Quite honestly, if the governor had put some effort into it, he probably could have pulled people along, but he didn't. And I leave you all to speculate why he didn't do that. But if people, if members were not willing to vote for legalizing adult use recreational cannabis in a year where they weren't facing the voters, there is no way in hell they're going to do it when they have to go out and face the voters. And 2020 is an election year. They're not, they're risk averse by nature. Uh, they're not going to go out there. And I will, you know, part of the reason why, I think, is they hear from people who aren't in this industry. They don't hear from people who are affected by the medical program. They don't hear from people who can educate them. And there is a very well funded lobby against marijuana legalization. They spent a fortune in Albany this year. It's a group called SAM, Smart Alternatives to Marijuana. I don't know where they get their money from. The, the big issue with, uh, that New York needs to tackle with and, and figuring out you know, issues like taxes, but who's going to be running these cannabis businesses? How are you going to make this so when it comes time and it is legal, that the middle class has an opportunity to be a part of this? They can do dispensary-only licenses, which will, will have a tremendous effect of reducing the barriers to entry and make it a lot easier and cheaper for people to get into this business. Because we have a vertically integrated program in New York State, which is extraordinarily expensive. And, and very few people are a vertically integrated program. They do cultivation, manufacturing, and dispensing. Very few companies can do that well. We've worked with a lot of companies who started out doing all three, and then they drop it. They find out what they excel at. If you're a retailer who's good at retail, you stick with retail. And, and you saw, I'm sorry, you saw the first original five license holders in New York. Three of the five have already gone under and had to be sold to somebody else. This is very difficult if you're in the vertically integrated model to be sustaining and to be profitable and just exist in this business. Even though New York's adult use market has stalled, the local CBD scene is strong. You expect a bigger, better. Yeah, yeah. We'll have a thousand people here next next summer. That's our plan. I'm Deborah Borchart, reporting for the Green Market Report from East Hampton, New York.